Hello, Sparkle. Uh, is this any? This is my Sparkle debut. Is this anyone else's Sparkle debut? Yeah. Oh, Philip, look what you've built. Oh, it's magic. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a story. Uh, I come from a big family. I am the oldest of seven Whoa. kids. Yes, I'm the oldest of seven kids, and we are close in age. Okay, we are seven kids in eight years with a set of twins. Whoa. We are we are not religious. We were raised Catholic, but it, that's not why the kids. My parents just wanted to have a big family, and they got uh, a late start. So boom, boom, boom. Here we are, very close in age, and. Um, Growing up, there were lots of opportunities for, you know, rivalries and alliances, and things got pretty intense. You had um, sort of like the regular alliances, like um, or rivalries, like girls versus boys, or in this case, boy, because there's just the one. <laughs> Do not feel bad for him; he is a prince. Uh, <laughs> He lives like a king. Uh, there was the three big kids versus the four little kids, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, we still use those uh, determinations today, although we've uh, made them a little more casual. It's three bigs and four lits, so it's be cash. Um, <laughs> there's also the twins versus the singles, which is how they refer to everyone else in the family. If you don't believe me, one of the twins is here. MB, scream. Yeah, she, she also, I told her, I was like, I'm gonna tell a story about the family. She was like, is it about me? I was like, no, it's not. But this moment is about you, because that's the other thing, is everybody's always vying for their attention. So it's a lot of like one versus one versus one versus one. So also number six is here too, so she's over there. Um, right, <laughs> guys, just gotta give everybody their moment. Um, but, but, but the oldest and most potent rivalry that the family has ever seen is the one between me, kid number one, and my sister Justine, kid number two. <laughs> so growing up, we were just different. We were different toddlers. Um, I, okay, a little bit about me as a toddler. Um, my parents said that when they'd have friends over, they would warn their friends. They'd say, don't make eye contact with Carly. <laughs> She'll make you read her a story. <laughs> like, I was just walking around with my storybook. Like, will someone read to me? Um, like, bless my heart. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> Justine, though. If you make eye contact with Justine as a toddler, she will steal your candy, she will hide it in her room, and she will sell it to the other kids. Okay, so that is the difference between me and Justine. And then as we got a little bit older, there were other differences. Um, when I was in kindergarten, I looked kind of similar to how I look now. I had a very round face and huge hair. Um, but my hair was like three times as big though, and they, they called it my lion's mane. <laughs> um, I also had very hairy legs before it was very progressive and, and cool to be a lady with hairy legs. Uh, so they gave me a tough time for that also. Um, and Justine had these high cheekbones and just like looked so mature. And the hair on her head was less frizzy and just nicer. And the hair on her legs was invisible, <laughs> which is not fair. Like all the Italians are supposed to be created alike. And I don't know how she ended up with the clear leg hair. I'm just I still... <laughs> Very jealous of it. And so, like, we had family friends and babysitters that used to come up to me and say, Justine's gonna be so beautiful when she grows up. <laughs> and like, here's a tip. If you see a kid that you think is gonna grow up to be hot, do not tell her nerdier, hairier, older sister that. Um, it just made me feel like a toad. Um, I felt like a, a toad. I thought, I was like, she is gonna grow up to be beautiful and I am gonna grow up to be responsible. <laughs> And that is what happened, but, but that's not the point. So also, Phil, if you want to just hit that button, I want to just give you a visual of the fam, just so you know what I'm talking about. Um, so that's us. So like, so like, the, and, and she, granted, Justine does kind of look like a dweeb in this exact picture, because she's missing a tooth, but like, look at the long legs, she's just great. And then there's my hair, it's huge. Like, the baby's crying, we're all wearing the same bathing suit. We were just like, we were a sight. Um, <laughs> so, so, um, okay, and then you can maybe flip it back the other way now, to black, so that, okay, great. Um, so when I was eight years old, um, I saw an audition notice in the local paper for a community theater production of Peter Pan. And my mom let me audition, and I got cast as a lost boy. Um, <laughs> and it was a transformative summer. Um, 
I found my people, my other weirdos. Um, also, being the oldest of so many kids, it was really special to have a place that was just mine. And I was one of the younger kids in the um, show, so I had all these people to look up to instead of all these monsters looking up at me. Uh, so that was really special. And they asked me to wear my hair huge for the part. So I just felt like this, I have found my thing. This is great. It's my thing. Uh, so I did the next show, which was Oliver. I was uh, an orphan. Um, and then in the next show, um, Hansel and Gretel, uh, Justine asked if she could audition. And um, and so like there wasn't much I could do about it, but I was, I was a little like a little salty. This is my thing, but um, but I said, okay, like, fine. Uh, so we both auditioned for Hansel and Gretel, and Justine was cast as Gretel. <laughs> and I was cast as a gingerbread person. <laughs> I was humiliated. Um, I'd also convinced a cool girl from school to also audition for the play because I was like, yeah, plays are cool. And then she had to witness this embarrassment. It was just, it was awful. So after the show, I was like, this can never happen again. I have to do something about this. Um, so I, I didn't want to have a conversation with her because that just felt like too much, too real, like uh, too intense. Um, so I did the only thing you do when you don't want to confront someone in conversation. I wrote her an email. So at age 11, I wrote a passive aggressive email from my address, Star Wars, spelled with a Z, cc at aol.com, to, to her address, LA Bryant 88 at aol.com. LA Bryant, as in Kobe Bryant, because she was into sports and theater. Her email address was cooler than mine. Like, you, you can't do theater and sports is not fair. Um, so that's, that's what I emailed her. I was like, hey Justine, uh, sports are your thing, theater is my thing, so please don't audition for the plays anymore. Thank you. Send. Um, and I felt that feeling that you feel after you send one of those emails. Like you know that feeling. Like the deed is done. Uh, I truly believe that the situation had been dealt with and like kind of maturely because I thought it was a well written email. It was very clear, simple. Um, <laughs> So I was super surprised an hour later when my dad knocked on my door holding a printed out copy of the email that I had sent her. Like I truly didn't understand. I was like, that is a private email that I wrote to her private email. How did you, I don't understand, like I didn't understand how email worked. I was just ahead of a lot of trends with this whole thing. So I, I, um, I was upset. He was like, you, this is unacceptable. You're grounded. You need to suck it up. Um, so I said, okay. And I sucked it up when she was cast as the little girl in Miracle on 34th Street. And I sucked it up when she was cast as Annie in Annie. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then like, at some, but then at some point I started, I, at some point I stopped hating her because I, I started to realize, <laughs> I don't know, that's what it was about. But I, I started realizing that she wasn't trying to ruin my life. Um, she just wanted to be close to me and, and hang out with me because she thought I was cool. And she also happened to like, share a, an interest and have a talent um, for a thing that I also had an interest in and kind of a talent in. Um, <laughs> slower start. Um, but <laughs> um, so uh, I graduated high school and moved off to Chicago for college uh, to study theater. And two years later, she moved off to Chicago to study theater in college. Um, and, but by then, we were friends. Okay, we were also friends, this is just the epilogue. We were friends six years later, or six years ago, uh, when I was hired to host a preschool television network, uh, their morning show. And so I was hosting this show, it was the early days on air, and believe it or not, preschool television has haters and trolls. So my first week of hosting this morning show on air, people came after me on the internet. They came after my hair, they came after my eyebrows. Um, someone had written a jingle like for the promo that was like, uh, I had to sing, I'm Carly Ann, I'm taking a train, a little boat, a bus or a plane, like to get to the network. And somebody wrote on the internet, I hope her boat sinks and her plane crashes. My kid will never watch her, she looks like a homeless person. It's just like, people are outrageous, like bouncing a two year old on their knee with this like hate speech, this is terrible. Um, so, uh, my sister, handled the haters uh, the only way we know how. She uh, zeroed in on one of their tr those trolls. She slid right into their DMs and she blasted them. Just ripped the guy to shreds. And uh, uh, the language that she ended up using was so colorful that I had to tell her, like, for the sake of my career, she could never, ever just communicate with anyone on the internet on behalf of me ever again. 
and she didn't. But also in that moment, I was so proud to have her as my sister, and I still am. Thank you.